This is the Victory Pioneer Podcast. You're tuned in to our all-weather series, Cloudy. For the word, here is Robert Hearn. All-weather, yung ating series, we're going through the book of Philippians, of course, written by the Apostle Paul. And uh, let me just walk you through, this is our fourth week, we started with stormy, when things are difficult, sabi natin, we could still find joy in the midst of challenges, because uh, we could find our joy in Christ. Oh, it's sunny, and when all the, everything is doing great, when everything is perfect in your life, the question is always to whom or to what will you attribute it to? Sabi ni Apostle Paul, it's all about him knowing Christ more than anything else. Last week, we talked about windy. Okay, mahangin, uh, ang ihip ng hangin, okay. But uh, I like him, sabi niya, jumping from I wanted to know Christ and the power of His resurrection. And then he mentioned some things in there. And also today, we're going to talk about cloudy. Ang topic po natin ngayon ay peace in Christ, alright. So excited na po ako, I hope you are. I want everybody to stand up please in reverence to God's word. And please open your Bible to the book of Philippians. And this is going to be the last two weeks that we're going to discuss this. And then after that, we're going to go through our campus series. uh, That is the opening of school. Two weeks. And then after that, we're going to go to our uh, yearly discipleship uh, series. And we're going to talk about, I think, Connect, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, Philippians chapter 4. All right. So Philippians 4, starting on verse 1. Sabi niya dito, Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, My joy and crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I plead with Eodhia and I plead with Sintache to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contented at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of the fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. How many of you have heard that verse before? Diba? Ang daming mga kanta yan. Rejoice in the Lord always. How many of you have heard that? Okay. Rejoice. Re- okay, na. LSS. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Please join me in a word of prayer, Lord. Thank you. And even, Lord, as we talk about peace in you, I think Paul mentioned it, Lord, straight, that, Lord, that worry is a thief that steals our peace away. Lord, I pray that we would be able to, Lord, go through your word and learn and really find peace, Lord, in the midst of, Lord, when things are beyond us or above us. Panginoon, marami pong salamat. Holy Spirit, have your way. Speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can take your seats. Sino dito, um, ikaw yung taong medyo mahilig ka mag-alala. Meron ba dito, you kind of like, you tend to worry a lot from time to time? Or sino dito, nag-alala ka na minsan? Okay, salamat. Pwede po kayo magtaas ng kamay dahil hindi, hindi kayo tao. You know, from time to time, we tend to fall into that worry state, especially when things are not happening the way we wanted it to be or some situation beyond our control. Tama po ba? And uh, that's what we're gonna talk about today because when you talk about peace in Christ, I believe one of the thief of or a thief of uh, peace is worry and uh, the apostle Paul specifically said that but let, let me walk you through just going through the background interesting about worry because again just like the offering says that we worry a lot a lot of things but sometimes yung mga pinag-aalalahan natin hindi naman nangyayari di ba yung minsan iniisip natin siya sobra sobra let me just give you a background on verse 1 this is uh, Paul's love is being mentioned here his love uh, for the believers in Philippi is very evident. Look at it, what he said in verse 1. Sabi niya, I love and long for my joy and crown. That's why a lot of Bible scholars would say that Philippians is Paul's love and joy, considering that he was um, in prison for four and a half years and how the church actually supported him in the midst of his difficulty. Kaya mahal na mahal niya yung mga uh, saints of Philippi. And not only that, we see that in his uh, verse 2 that there was a problem that is going on there's actually a two friends in philippi that we're disagreeing kaya pag binasa niyo sa verse 2 sabi niya i plead with iodia and sintache what a name right and to agree with each other these are two women that are having disagreement in church 
And that's why sabi niya, yes, I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel. And those two people have helped Paul, stood with Paul, shared the gospel to people. But Paul was pleading because he was very concerned with these two women fighting. It's because it's creating a little bit more, para nagkakaroon ng disunity. And sometimes that tends to put us, in, I'm not saying that the Apostle Paul was worrying, but I'm saying is that it's kind of like bringing, uh, he's thinking about it. It's kind of like concern about what was going on. And he's encouraging the saint just for them to be able to what? To come together and help these women come into peace. Come on now. Di ba minsan pagka may mga relationship ka na hindi nagwo-work, how many of you know that puts you in a place of worry? Di ba? Tama ba? Kung hari, nag-away kayo ng misis mo, di ba? Parang mayroong disagreement. Parang hirap, di ba? Yung wari naglalakad yung tao, parang nagkasagutan kayo, or medyo nag-away kayo, or there's some disagreement that was going on. It's just kind of like, it's difficult to see that person. You don't know how to act, you don't know how to respond, and somehow, iniisip mo siya, lalong-lalo na kung yung na, nakaaway mo, yung mahal mo sa buhay. Like yung misis mo, yung mister mo, di ba? Kind of like, pag bago ka matulog, oh man. And then now you're thinking, am I gonna... Am I, am I gonna be the first one to say sorry or <laughs> you're supposed to be her? Naisip nyo na ba how many How many married people do we have here? Okay? Minsan pa, nag-away ba kayo minsan? Oh, praise God. Okay? Kala ko kasi kami lang kahit pastor ako eh. Okay? So, minsan pa nag-away kayo, di ba? Yung, yung just the pride and who's gonna say sorry first. And sometimes we want to say, di ba? We want to justify things and say that, no, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. So, why would I say sorry? Okay, and here's what, if you wanted peace really in the household, I mean, it should be settled just like what Paul was saying in the church, you know, okay, for them to find an agreement, okay, and usually as a husband, the husbands, I want to encourage you, okay, to keep the peace, God had called us to lead the home, sometimes we have to initiate the conversation, okay, <laughs> keep the peace and initiate the communication, salamat sa mga sampo na naniniwala, okay, <laughs> di ba? Kasi mahirap eh. And I, sana, okay? Yung prayer ko lang is, we do that and we step out in faith and initiate the conversation because the usual feeling is, kung ayaw mo ang kausapin, hindi rin kita kausapin. Na, nasabi mo na ba yun? Naisip nyo na ba yun? Parang feeling ko itong 9am na to, talagang super perfect kayo dito, okay? But nonetheless, sa mga taong katulad lang namin, maraming maraming salamat po. Okay? So let, so let me walk you through. And then sabi niya ganun dito, uh, there's a problem that went on, but we don't know the cause of that disagreement. Actually, Paul did not mention it clearly there. But also, but there was an appeal from Paul for these people to be helped. And Paul encourages the church in verse 4 and 5 in two things. Number one, he encourages them to rejoice in the Lord. That means to still find joy, maybe in the midst of persecution that was going on during at that time. And also, if you look at this, I mean, yeah, let your gentleness be evident to all. Because the Lord is near. Two things that he encourages him with is that finding joy and also finding also in realizing God in God's presence in the midst of everything. But also he shifted and also by encouraging them not to worry. And actually the word here, Paul encourages the believers not to be anxious. That's why if you read at verse 6, Sabi ngayon, do not be anxious about anything. That word anxious really, if you go back to the original Greek there, the meaning is this, okay? Para maintindihan natin, anxious or worrying means to be pulled in different directions. Okay? So to be pulled in different directions. That means if you're anxious, you're, maybe your faith is telling you to do this, but your fear is head telling you to do this. To be anxious is to worry, is to be pulled in different direction. Alam mo yung taong nakakita ka na ba na sobrang na, nag-aalala siya at nahihirapan siya, so anxious. Ibig sabihin, yung balisang-balisa siya na you don't know, parang he's being pulled into different direction. Gusto niyang gawin to, gusto kong gawin to. Come on now, yun yung description. So sabi nga ni Paul, do not be anxious about anything. So when things are a little bit beyond your control, do not be anxious. Do not be pulled into the whatever direction. But sabi niya, and also he says here, and that's what we get the word worry. And actually, it's an old English definition. Worry means is to strangle. Wow. Do not be anxious to be pulled in different direction. It was translated, do not worry. Some different translations will say, to strangle, isn't it? Ibig sabihin, to strangle yung sasakaling ka, kapatid. Alam mo ba yung tao na worry Parang, hindi ka naman literally sinasakal mo yung sarili mo, di ba? Parang, I'm worrying today. Pero di ba yung mga tao nag sobrang nag they're being strangled by their emotions, by their mind, and the things that's going on in their lives. Hindi na sila makahinga, hindi sila makaisip, makaisip. 
Imagine mo lang, nung nag-alala ka dati na sobrang alala mo, you're being strangled, isn't it? Not only that you're being pulled to different direction, but parang yung sitwasyon, parang nasasakal ka. Kaya ngayon mga nag-aalala ng tao, kung ano-anong outlet yung ginagawa nila sa buhay. Okay? Anong ginagawa ng iba? Nagiinom. So, imbis na, you know, para lang hindi nila maisip yung problema, they start drinking. Yung iba nagda-drugs. Kasi they feel like they're being strangled by the problem or by the situation, but they can't do nothing about it. And I think that's the most difficult thing, isn't it? Actually, the picture that I'm, I'm seeing to strangle, I think, is the word, I mean, yung kumuno, yung quicksand. Yung ganun yung effect ng worry. As you continue to move, you begin to sink more and more. And you realize as you begin sink, to sink more and more, actually you can't do anything about it. As you try to struggle more, okay, you begin to sink deeper. Ganun, alam niyo yung kumunoy, di ba? Sino dito nakumunoy ka na? Wala pa, di ba? Sino dito nakapanood ka na nung nakukumunoy? I don't know why kumunoy yung tawag. <laughs> I just, you know. But it's a quicksand, isn't it? And you've watched those movies, di ba? Yung tao na sa quicksand. As they begin to struggle more, then they begin to sink more. I think that's what the effect of worry. That's why the Bible is always telling us, do not worry, do not worry. Because it's, not, it's a sin, it's not from God. And worry is the greatest thief of peace. And actually, if you read the next few verses, we can see here the question I think that we're going to answer in this is this. How can we overcome worry and experience God's peace? Come on now. How can we overcome worry? I believe we can. Naniniwala po ba kayo? Because God doesn't want you to, be, to worry too much. God doesn't want you to what? To be pulled in different direction. God doesn't want you to what? To stronger yourself just thinking too much things. Ang tanong is, paano po ba natin ma-overcoming worry? Ready na po ba kayo? Okay? Ready? Tinamay ka tabi mo. Sabi mo sa kanya, parang nag-worry ako, pero ready na ako. Okay? Sige, tingnan mo lang. Sabi mo sa kanya, parang nag-worry ako, pero ready na ako. Okay, let's look at the word today, okay? So, how do we overcome worry and also experience God's peace? Kasi ang galing eh. Pagka yung sinabi ni Apostle Paul, then he gave us encouraging words here. And how to worry, but not only not just to overcome worry, but to experience God's peace. And interesting about peace, di ba? And uh, you cannot buy peace in the drugstore. Di ba? Pwede kang bumili ng 500 milligram ng amoxicillin or 500 milligram ng, uh, ano pa ba yung mga, ano pa? Ano no? Toxicillin? Ano? <laughs> okay. 500 milligram ng paracetamol. But pagka meron kang nag-worry ka, hindi ka po pwede pumunta sa ano eh, drugstore. Ah, meron mo ba kayong 500 milligrams ng peace? Uh, ang dami ko rin nung inaalala ngayon, gawin niya ng 1,000. You can't eh. But Paul gave us an encouraging word, not only to overcome peace, but also how to, uh, to overcome worry and also experience God's, God's peace. And here's number one that he said. Number one is this, pray. When you worry too much and we are being overwhelmed and things are pulling you in different direction, gagawin ko ba to? Ito ba yung gagawin ko? Dito ba talaga? Lord, ano ba talaga? And you're worrying and you feel like, you know, you're being pulled in different... Not all that is strangling you. That situation is strangling you too much. Parang sinasakal ka na. Sabi niya, Apostle Paul, simply lang, pray. Ano mag sabihin? Look at this. Sabi niya, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by what? And petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Tingin kayo sa akin. Number one, how to overcome worry? You come to God and talk to God. Prayer is simply communicating to God. Let's not make it complicated. That's why things are complicated. It brings more worry to your situation because you're making things that are simple complicated. Kaya yung solution ni Paul, number one is so simple. You pray. Ano sabi ni Paul? When you are being pulled to whichever direction, ito ba, ito ba, come to the center, which is the foundation of everything, which is God. You come to God, and what? And pray. Focus on God. Kasi pa nag-worry ka, dami mo, gagawin ko ba to? Masasaktan ba siya? Gagaling ba siya? Mahal niya ba ako? May pag-asa pa ba? Iiwan niya ba ako? Pray. Anong mangyayari sa akin? Now you're being pulled. Ito ba? Eto ba, di ba pag may sitwasyon, iniisip mo, paano kung ganito yung mangyari? Tama? Eh, paano kung ganito? Paano kung ganito? Paano kung ganyan? Paano ito? Paano ito? Eh, puro paano eh. Kaya ikaw, hilitong-lito. Ano bang gagawin ko? Ano bang gagawin ko? Tingin ko dito, pray. Ibig sabihin, God should be our first resort, not the last one. The problem with us is this. Sobrang talino tayo. Sometimes we are so, you know, 
intelligent and you're so good that sometimes you put God at the last resort and you just maybe not telling God directly but that our action is telling God I could do this on my own Lord I just let me just think about this when I'm ready to ask for your help then I'll ask your help but for now I think I could still do it minsan ganun tayo eh tingin dito minsan kasi mayabang tayo tingin mo yung katabi mo sige tingin mo lang sabihin mo sa kanya mayabang ka kasi hindi talaga oh sabihin mo Huwag kang mahiya, sabihin mo. Pastor, ang sama mo naman magsalita. Oo, oh, minsan ako din, mayabang din ako eh. Come on now. O, oh, kita mo, ay mo pang aminin. Bakit? Mayabang ka talaga eh. <laughs> di ba? Hindi, hindi, hindi ako. When situation that is beyond our control or even within our control, when it, they come, sometimes we don't want to get in, what? We don't want God to get involved because we're telling God that we could do it on our own. Bakit? Yabang yun, pride yun. You could look at it in all you want. <laughs> it's just simple, it's just pride. That's why Paul's encouragement, you want to overcome worry, number one is what? You come and pray. Talk to God. Kausapin mo kagad si Lord. Ito yung problema kasi, pag may problema, unang-una, kausap mo yung sarili mo. Mahirap yun. Di ba? Napansin mo pag may worry, sinong laging kausap mo? Yung sarili mo. Ano man gagawin ko? Ano man yung ano yun? Pero yung ano, ganun eh. Pero yung ano dun sa ano? Pero pagka gumanon ako doon, oh, ano doon sa ano eh? Pero yung ano doon... Guys, I'm not saying you don't think, okay? I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, I'm not saying that, okay, ibig sabihin pala, pasto, pag dumating yung problema, tutunga nga na lang ako. Di ba? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying when the problem comes and then you don't do anything about it. Okay? I'm not, I'm not even saying or suggesting that. Di ba pag may problema, oh, may problema ba? <laughs> Well, I think the best thing is that just don't talk to yourself. Talk to God. Come to God. Lord, ito yung problema eh. Lord, kung gagawin ko to, Lord, kasi ganito. Di ba? I mean, God, and, and this one is how these things are working out. And if I do this, I mean, talk to God. That's what prayer is all about. Let's not make it complicated. Simply talking to the Lord. Nothing more. Nothing else. Whenever we find ourselves worrying, it means we need to be alone with God. When we start worrying, that means we need to be alone with God. You have to have that God moment. Pag nag worry ka na, first, God, I need my alone time with you. That means if I'm not going to stop, this thing is going to pull me into different direction and sooner or later it's going to strangle me. Hindi ka na makakahinga kapatid. Pupuluputan ka niyan. He should always be our first option. And look at this. And when he mentioned prayer, look at what he said here. And he said, I like the NLT version. So, I mean, I do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. And look at this. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Not only because He uses two words, petition and thanksgiving. What do you mean by petition? The things that you really, do, that you really need. It's from the heart. And when I talk about prayer, prayer, yung petition is the prayer that you really need at that very moment. Alam mo, yun, nag-pray ka na ba yung, nag-pray ka ba nung galing sa puso mong prayer? Yun talagang, yun yung petition. Lord, kailangan na kailangan ko na to, God. Lord, help me. If you're not gonna come through, Lord, na, yun yung petition. Other translation said, supplication. And how many of you know, if you are in a situation beyond your control, I'm not talking about memorized prayer here. It's a prayer from the heart. You're not just bubbling words, but actually it's coming from your heart. Ibang iba yun. Diba? Kasi kunwari, may sakit yung anak mo, kailangan gumaling. Diba? Hindi mo na, hindi mo na yung sinaulo mong prayer yon You say it from your heart. Lord, pagalingin mo siya, Lord, kasi mamamatay yung anak ko pag hindi mo pinagal. Ano, minemorize mo pa ba? Lord, our Father, our in heaven, hallowed be your name. Hindi mo na ano yun. I mean, you're, you're going through me. It's just saying what is in your heart. I like what that says. Sabi yung ganun dito. Tell God what you need and thank Him. Dalawang bagay. For prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Why thanksgiving? Because so many times we are so fast to ask and slow to appreciate, isn't it? Why is it thanksgiving important when you're worrying? <laughs> Interesting. Because that thing that Paul put there, hindi lang po yan nilagay niya just because important. Sabi niya, well, not only you pray, but you pray, petition, whatever is in your heart. Not only that, but also with thanksgiving. Because when you worry, we, you magnify things and you, what, fail to see that is God is a lot bigger. 
Come on now. Yun kasi yung worry. It magnifies a situation bigger than God. That's why when you begin, I like the, I like the NLT verse, sabi niya, and thank Him for all that, what? For all He has done. So it takes faith to thank the Lord for things that He is about to do in your life. And also it takes faith just to look back in everything that the Lord had done in your life. When you see that, you see God is bigger. And you look at your situation and say, God, if you were able to do it before, you could still do it today. That re what? That overcomes worry in your life, isn't it? Thank Him for what He has done. Meron bang mga ginawa si Lord sa buhay mo, kapatid? May mga mabubuti pang bagay na ginawa si Lord sa buhay mo. Sino dito kung meron, pakitaas ang kamay. Meron mabubuting bagay ginawa sa iyo si Lord. Praise God. So you begin to thank Him. You look at those. Lord, ginawa mo yon. Lord, kaya mo to. Ang mahirap pag wala. Lord, sino ka? Ang mahirap to. Hindi mo kilala si God eh. Hello? Amen? Now look at this. Not only pray, but also, let me walk you through. So, and what was the result? Rather, before moving on to verse, uh, to point two, here's the result. Sabi niya, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Sabi niya, when you pray, okay, when worry comes, and you pray, and you come to God, sabi niya, and the peace of God. Look at that. Look at the result. And the peace of God. And then, the New Living Translation version says, Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I like that. The peace of God will guard. Interesting because at that very moment, Paul was chained to a Roman guard. He knew exactly what was going on. I think it was through his experience that he was writing this. Because he was chained to a guard. Because he was in prison. So alam niyo yun, sabi niya, that peace, siguro tinitingnan niya yung guard, that peace will guard you. Ibig sabihin, will watch over you. And the peace of God, peace will guard the two areas that create most worry for us. And what is that? Sabi niya, the peace of God will guard your what? Your hearts. Because sometimes when you go through difficulties or things that you don't understand, we have some wrong feelings about situations. Sabi niya, that peace will ha- guard your heart not to respond into wrong feelings or wrong emotion. Because when you are worrying too much, sometimes you get too emotional, isn't it? You're not thinking right anymore. Sabi niya, that peace will guard your heart. The two most areas that affect us when we worry, the heart and the mind. And also, not only that, it will guard your mind. From what? From doing, from wrong thinking, yung mga maling mga bagay. Because pag nag worry tayo, kung ano-ano na yung mga naiisip natin. Di ba? May kilala ka bang tao, worry ng worry? Parang wala na sa hulog. Di ba? May nakausap ka na bang ganon? Parang hindi na logical yung mga sinasabi. Kasi, para ito na lang gagawin ko. Para wala na eh. Walang wala na eh. Papatayin ko na lang yung hold. Dapin ko na lang yung banko. Para kailangan ko ng pera. Di ba? Para Come on. Paano mo naisip yan? Because nga, it's pulling you into the different direction. Yung mind mo, kaya sabi niya, guess what? That peace, God's peace, will guard your heart and also your mind. But it comes with what? You coming to God and praying. Gusto mong, during that things, that things are difficult and when you're worrying, Para mabag, mab, mab, ano, mabantayan yung puso mo, tsaka yung isip mo, manalangin ka kapatid. And I don't think so, God would tell you, pag wala kang pera, sabihin sa'yo ni Lord, anak bang hold up ka na lang. Walang wala na tayo ngayon. <laughs> Lord, uh, sabihin sa'yo ni Lord, di ba? Anak, sige na. Okay? Patayin mo na lang yan kasi wala na eh. Kapos na kapos tayo sa heaven ngayon. Nabenta na natin lahat ng mga gold. Wala, hindi ganun. <laughs> because it brings you to the right perspective. And talking about guarding your mind, he moves to verse 2, uh, verse 8. And here's the second point. Okay, think right. Not only that you pray, but also you think right. Look at this. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Philippians 4, 8. Sabi niya, finally, brothers, whatever is true, kala niyo yung word na whatever, bago lang yun. Noon pa yun. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is what? Right? Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, Okay? Whatever, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. New Living Translation, sabi niya, and now dear bro- brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts. I like that. Sabi niya, think right. Ibig sabihin ng think, think dito, fill your mind. Because when you worry, you fill your mind with a lot of stuff. But sabi ni Paul, guess what? Think right. If you're gonna fill your mind, fill it with the right things. Instead of feeling your mind. 
Nag-aaway lang kayo ng mister mo, iniisip mo na kagad, ay, wala yan, yan ako, grabe. Hindi niya na ako mahal. Hindi niya na ako mahal. Yan, dala niya, lumabas siya, iniwan niya na. Hindi na siya bangaling. Pastor, iniwan niya na. Yung pala, bumili lang ng lunch. <laughs> Bakit? You're not thinking right. Because you're too emotional. You're filling your mind with a lot of stuff that you should not fill your mind. Thinking is filling your mind. Peace involves the mind. Wrong thinking leads to wrong feelings. Let me say that. Wrong thinking will result to wrong feelings. And also we have to realize that the thoughts are real and very powerful, isn't it? That's why the Apostle Paul was, he was saying, if that peace will guard your heart and also your mind. When you, more, when you worry, you have to guard your mind. That's why you have to think right. Here's a quotation from Dr. Covert. And here's what he said. He made a survey of people worrying. And here's what he said. And I quote, Only 8% of things people worried about were legitimate matters of concern. The other 92%, 92% were either imaginary, never happened, or involved matters over which the people had no control anyway. Pag nag-worry ka raw, only 8% really are legitimate. The 92%, those are the description. What are those? Imaginary. You're just thinking some stuff that never is going to happen. Number two is that, oh what? It involved matter which people had no control. Kaya sabi ni Jesus dun sa Matthew 6, Why worry about tomorrow? You're putting yourself into the future that it doesn't exist. Yun yun. Ganwari, di ba? Naku, wala naman mamatay. Nasa naman mamatay. Hindi pa patay. Pinatay mo na. Kaya imbis na magkaroon ka ng faith dun sa sitwasyon, ano nangyari? Patay na siya eh. Wala ka ng faith. Iniiwan, iniiwan niya na ako. Iniiwan niya na ako. Nasa bahay lang pala natutulog nun sa kabilang kwarto. The things that we should think about. What are those? Sabi niya ganun dito. Let's walk them through one by one. By one. Sabi niya ganun dito. Whatever is true. What do you mean by that? Dwell on things that are true, not lies. Simple. You have to arrest your mind every time when you're worrying. No, no, no. That's not true. That's a lie from the enemy. Hindi yung... Kung ano? Because when you worry, okay, it's like an inside job. Alam mo yun, yung nanakawan, tapos may kakuntsaba sa loob. Di ba? Ganun yun. When you worry, it's like an inside job. Satan uses worry as a way to walk through here. That's why when he was, when you're worrying, he's gonna put out so many lies. That's why you need to come against that and arrest that and say, no, no, that's not true. That's not true. That's a lie. Now all of that, I mean, whatever is noble. What do you mean by that? Whatever is noble. Think about some dignified and worthy of respect. Think about those things. Diba? Karispe, respeto, respeto ba tong iniisip ko ngayon? Not only that, right is a bit, it conforms to God's standard. Is it really biblical what I'm thinking about right now? Or I just wanted to do this just to satisfy my emotion because it's beyond my control. Whatever is, uh, whatever is right, it's a bit, Lord, is it biblical? Is it according to your standard? Then think about those things. If not, don't. Next, whatever is pure, that means not mixed with moral, imo, uh, moral impurity. May moral standard. Not only that, lovely. I like that. When you see the word lovely there, in the end, dial beautiful. Yung original context niyan is that lovely, what promotes peace rather than conflict? What promote peace rather than conflict? Ibig sabihin, pag may sitwasyon, iniisip ko, Lord, eto ba dapat tong gagawin ko? But Lord, kung gagawin ko to, mag-aaway-aaway yung tao. Don't think about such things. Pag inisip ko to, pag ginawa ko, mas mag-aaway kami ng misis ko. Eh, hindi mo. Don't dwell on those. And here's the last one, sabi niya, admirable. It was being positive and constructive. You think those. If you think when you're worrying and when you're down in that state, and guess what? Each and every one of those is going to rub your, your peace when you think about those things. That's why you need to arrest. Lord, this is not noble. This is not respectable. I'm not going to think about this. Lord, I don't, I don't think so. Lord, this is going to uh, promote Lord peace. in the. No, no, no. This is going to resolve into conflict. Never. Lord, this is not within your standard. I'm not. Not even close. Pero tayo baligtad eh. Nag-worry tayo lahat-lahat. In-entertain natin. Hmm. Oo oh, nga no. Sa bagay, kung gagawin ko naman to, kung hold up ko yung bangko, pwede hindi naman. Uh, iwanan ko yung misis ko dahil nag-aaway kami. Pwede naman, di ba? Do you think it's according to God's standard? But sometimes we entertain those. We have to be careful now. You know why? And here's the last part. Sabi niya, if anything excellent or praiseworthy. Because those, all of those are excellent and praiseworthy, isn't it? Not the opposite. Let me share this to you. I forgot who I got it from. Definitely not from me. But this is a good illustration right here. Sabi niya, sow a thought, reap an action. Sow a thought, reap an action. 
Lahat po ng action natin nagsisimula dito yan. It doesn't end there. So an action, reap a habit. A continuous action will result to a habit. Yung habit, yung ginagawa mo na lang unconsciously, ba, habit mo na. Parang ikaw, di ba? Pag nagising ka sa umaga, what's your usual habit? I hope to brush your teeth. Amen? Right? Hindi po kayo sumasagot, kinakabahan ako. <laughs> yung iba naman, just to look at their phone right away. Pag gising, nag-text ba siya sa akin? Na. Okay, hindi kanya mahal. Okay. So a habit, reap a character. The habit that you do will become your character. Ibig sabihin ng character, ikaw. Ah, si ano, yung marunong mang utang. Lagi nang utang, character. Yeah, you people will know you by your what? The habit, the actions that you do repeatedly. Ah, si ano, yung mahilig, magaling magsinungaling. Character yun. Or, ah, si ano, yung generous. Character. Habit eh. Hindi ka naging generous dahil namigay ka ng piso ng isang araw. And here's the last one. So a character reap a destiny. I think that's powerful, isn't it? That character will spell your destiny. Tingin kayo dito. If you're sowing a thought of sleeping with someone, it's just a matter of time. If you're sowing a thought of, ah, maglalasing ako, maglalasing ako, it's just a matter of time. It produces into action. Hindi mo naman, hindi ka naman ng babae dahil naisip mo lang isang araw gumising ka eh. Hindi ka naman nag-drugs, hindi ka naman uminom at nasing lasenggo ka na ngayon dahil naisip mo lang yon isang araw pagising mo gusto ko maging lasenggo ngayong ah, buong buhay ko hindi yun start with a thought that's how powerful it is same is true with us start with a thought pagising mo Lord I want to spend time with you today I want to Lord I want to read my Bible today Lord I want to pray Amen it's pagising mo that it produces an action and then after that your action you do every day it becomes a what? a habit Ngayon yung habit, hindi ka na ma, hindi na maano yung hindi na kumpleto yung araw mo pag hindi ka nagpe-pray. Habit na eh. Tapos yun na yung character mo. Ha, ah, si ano? Ah, alam mo pag nakikita ka yan, talagang he loves the Lord. Kuha niyo. Tapos yun yung destiny mo. Mapapamahal ka kay God. Kaya nagtataka ka. Gusto kong marami lumalapit sa akin eh. Pastor, gusto ko pong malapit sa Panginoon. Pastor, gusto ko pong maging close kami. Simulan mo yan sa buhay mo. Hindi naman the next day, bugigising ka na lang, malamal ko na si Lord. Hindi, ganun yun. Ano yun? Pinoses ka ni God? There's no such thing. Di ba? Ayaw na ayaw mo si God biglas, 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 nagising ko, oh, love ko si God. Ano yun? Zombie ka? Ano yun? Simulan mo. Di ba? And last but not the least, not only that. Number one, ang sabi natin, when you worry, what do you do to overcome? Pray. Number two, and here's the last one, obey God. Pansin nyo, sobrang simple. Because Paul wanted it to be very simple because when you worry, you tend to complicate things. And here's what he said, sabi niya, Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into... There you go. Ibig sabihin niya, obey. Put into practice. Obey God. Whatever you have, two things. And sinabi niya, learn or receive. Right living always brings peace. Because disobedience brings unrest. Pag nag obey ka kay God, may peace ka. Hindi yung alam mo na yun, when you disobey, you know that you are not what? If you disobey, you know that you are not in God's will. That's why you don't have peace. It's just simple. Kaya sabi niya, you want to experience and to overcome peace? Okay, obey God. Ibig sabihin, sabi niya, live right. Then you will have peace. Kahit inaaway ka sa paligid mo, pero pag alam mo tama yung ginagawa mo, may peace ka. Tama po ba? Pero kahit walang umaaway sa'yo, alam mo nagdi-disobey ka kay God, wala kang peace. Di ba? Kahit mga taong ganon, alam mo nagdi-disobey kay God, kamustahin mo lang. May mga ganon ako eh. Minsan masasalubong ko sa mall. Hi, Pastor Robert. Kasi kamusta ka na? Kamusta ka na? Kamusta ka na? Okay naman ako. Pastor, nagbabasa ka ng Bible. Wala naman akong tinatanong. Guilty. Kamusta ka na? Ay, Pastor, hindi ako nakatayin last Sunday kasi ano, okay lang. Wala. Nangangamusta lang ako. Bakit? Alam mo eh. Yung mga taong guilty. Tignan mo yung katabi mo. Tignan mo yung katabi mo. Sabi mo sa kanya, guilty ka ba? Hmm. Sabi niya, we must learn the word, whatever you have learned. Not only, yung iba sa si ibang tao, they stop with learning the word. 
But look at how Paul did a progression to the discussion. Sabi niya, whatever you have learned, ibig sabihin, learn the word, not only that, receive it. Ibig sabihin ng receive, magiging totoo sa buhay mo. It's different to learn and to put it here. The next step is to put it here in your heart. Receiving it, make it your own. A lot of people attend church, they just learn, they don't receive the word. Kasi pag nireceive mo na siya, ibig sabihin, totoo na siya sa buhay mo kasi nasa puso mo na. We could talk about many things here and you could sit down every Sunday, but if you don't just receive it, it's not gonna affect you. Intense lang. Intense lang. <laughs> and he doesn't stop there. Sabi niya, learn, receive, and look at this, hear it, okay? Dalawa eh. Sabi niya, learn and receive. Ito naman sabi niya, hear and do. May kilala ka bang tao? Ang dami narinig sa salita ni Lord, pareho pa rin yung buhay. Bakit? You could hear it all you want, but if you don't obey it, it's not gonna change you. Actually, yung pinakamahirap na tao is that yung maraming narinig sa salita ni Lord, tas walang ginagawa. Mas mahirap yun. Because nagiging nangyari sa'yo, yung puso mo nagiging kalos. Ibig sabihin, nagkakakalyo. Kasi na nangungusap na nangungusap si Lord, wala kang ginagawa. Susunod nun, uupo ka na lang rito, it's just gonna tickle your ear, but it's not, it's, it's not gonna result into a changed life. That's the most difficult thing. Yun yung prayer ko kay Lord lagi, Lord, I pray that I don't get too familiarized with your word. Whenever that I hear it and I read it, Lord, that I will always respond to your word. Because the tendency is this, we get so religious that we sit down and we hear, if we don't do anything, guess what? In business, your heart, sabi niya, give me a heart of flesh. No, it's going to be a heart of stone. Kasi you're hearing the word and you're not doing it, it's going to just callous your heart. So susunod, wala nang effect sa yung word ni Lord. Wala na. Matigas na yung puso mo eh. Pag sinanarinig mo yung salitang, di ba, don't sleep around, ha, narinig ko na yan. Di ba? Huwag ka mag-chase me, ah, narinig ko na yan, narinig ko na nung preaching yan eh. Huwag ka mag-lasing, ah, narinig ko na yan, paulit-ulit eh, dami ko ang kausap eh. Pero hindi mo ginagawa, titigas yung puso mo. Tapos wala na. Ganun na ka na lang, hindi ka na magbabago. Yun ba yung gusto natin? We just continue to hear and hear and word and not do it and then not change us? I think that's the saddest picture of all. The saddest picture of all. And look at this, sabi niya, and the God of peace will be with you. In last part ng verse 9. And the God of peace will be with you. As you obey the Lord, sabi niya, and you learn, and you receive, and you hear, and you obey, sabi niya, the God of peace will be with you. What do you mean by that? The peace of God is one test for us to know whether we are God's will or not. And the God of peace will be with you because one test that we will know if we are in God's will or not is God's peace. Kapatid, kung wala kang peace sa ginagawa mo ngayon, ibig sabihin, most probably, most probably, hindi yan will ni Lord sa buhay mo. Because I've seen people step out in faith and do some difficult things in life. And some people would say, you know, hindi yan ano kay God. But if you know that it is from God, step out in faith and you obey Him. Yun po yung buhay natin. Our life is a life of faith, isn't it? God is calling somebody, the righteous shall live by faith. Yun po, God is going to call us always to step out in faith and to live in faith. Yeah, ingat po tayo. I think this is a good ex- encouragement from the Apostle Paul. That we should always learn and what? Receive it. We should hear and we should do it. Because we could all sit down here, even me. I'm not saying it's only you, even me. Kung hindi tayo mag-obey, we're all in the danger of just our heart being callous. And, and wala nang effect sa iyo. Ibig sabihin, you're just going through the motion of going to church and hearing God's word, but nothing is changing. The God of peace will be with you. Whenever we disobey, we lose that peace. And we know that we have done something wrong. I don't want to be in that position. Interesting about Apostle Paul, sabi niya, you get overcome worry actually. It should not pull you in different direction. It should not strangle you. But it should bring you all together. Sabi niya, pray. And the peace of God will transcend all understanding because you are entering into a place of a supernatural when you pray. The mind cannot understand that. Number two is what? Think right. Because you have to guard your mind. And number three is that? On the number three? Obey God. Because when you live right, you know 
that God of peace will be with you when you obey Him. Amen? Amen. Let's all stand up. Let's pray. Yes, bow down, peace, and eyes close. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for speaking to us today. And thank you, for Lord, for just zeroing, pinpointing things in our hearts. My prayer is that, Lord, as we are here today, that we would respond. Not only that we have heard your word, Lord, we want to obey it. Not only, Lord, that we just want to learn from your word, Lord, but we wanted to receive it and make it in our hearts and make it our own. Lord, that's our hearts. As we come to you today. Heads bowed on peace and eyes closed. And I just want to make this challenge today. Number one, if you're here, and you know that things are pulling you apart, things that you are in a situation that is beyond your control, the question is, what are you going to do? It's time to pray. Think right. And obey Him. First challenge that I want to throw, if you're here, na alam mo na, ang dami mong iniisip, ang daming nag-worry ka, but God is calling you today, anak, guard your mind. Guard your mind. Guard your mind. God is telling you, don't worry about tomorrow, guard your mind. And you're here today, and if that's your tendency, is to think so many things, God's not, God's designed for you. He wanted you to guard your mind. Think right. Noble, admirable, lovely, true. And if that's you today, I want you to lift up your hands and let me pray for you. Yes, 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 yes. Maraming salamat. And if you're lifting up your hands, sabihin mo, manalangin ka patid, sabihin mo, Lord, dito po ako. Lord, patawarin mo ako, God, if I dwell on some stuff that I should not dwell upon. But today, God, I'm dwelling, I'm thinking right, I'm going to think about praiseworthy and excellent things, Lord. I'm going to think right. I'm not going to let the enemy just plant seeds of lies. But I'm going to stand for what is true. Even at this moment. Lord, thank you for these people. Thank you for just speaking to them at this time, Lord. Sabi mo, Lord, then the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard their mind and their hearts. Focus them again back to your word. And you bring that peace, Lord, to them that pass it all understanding. In Jesus' name, put down your hands. Next, if you're here and, and you look at your life and maybe you're experiencing no peace, you know why? Because you look at your life today because you know you are in a place, at a place of disobedience. You know you're doing something that God is not pleased. That's why you don't have peace. Let me challenge you. Get right. Obey God. Obey God. Disobedience may not be something that you're doing something that is sinful, but disobedience is doing something that God doesn't want you to do. Obey God today. If that's you, let me pray for you. I want you to lift up your hands and let me pray for you today. Yes, yes, yes. Maraming salamat. Thank you for being honest. Thank you. Thank you. Yun po yung simula niyan. Nung harapin natin sa harapan ng Panginoon, sabihin natin, Panginoon, ako po yun. And I want you to repent if you need to repent. Sabi mo, Lord, ayoko na to, ayoko na gawin. Mali, pinipilit ko. Starting today, Lord, I want to obey you and put you first. Lord, marami pong salamat sa mga nagtatas ng kamay. Lord, just go and, Lord, just move sa buhay nila. Lord, I know, God, when they make things right and when they obey, Lord, you promise, and the God of peace will be with them. Will be with them. Every step of the way, Lord, you will be with them. Because you promise that you would never leave us nor forsake us. Pano, marami pong salamat. Put down your hands. And Lord, we pray, every one of us, every day, God, when worry comes, that we should run towards you. We will put you first. You first, Lord. Before anything else. Lord, we honor you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. We hope you are inspired by this week's message. You can also join us during our new midweek service on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. For more information, visit us at victorypioneer.org.